Hello, Assalamu alaikum uh, from Medina and I uh, hope, hope you're well. This is a response to the uh, Muslim scholars, da'is, imams who are meant to be our guides uh, for the ummah, uh, but I need to call them out uh, because um, uh, of their views that they've expressed for the Israel-Palestine issue where your role and responsibilities really should be to unite uh, Jews, Christians and Muslims under the Abrahamic Brotherhood, under Prophet Abraham, the principles that are common between all three religions. And I'm recording this in Medina, which is, unf I think, very, very unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, we're here for the Umrah, mashallah, and this is our last stop. And I you know, pray for all uh, of you who are uh, listening, watching this, especially the scholars I'm going to uh, mention. Um, uh, although it's going to be a severe criticism, um, ultimately, we pray that uh, you reach the gates of paradise, because what you've done for Islam no one can match what you have done. Um, so Allah bless you and your family, uh, inshallah, in the paradise. So this criticism should be taken uh, um, on the chin. And I hope you will actually listen um, and take the advice, sincere advice. Uh, the reason why I say I regretted making this in Medina is because the first time, I think a few years ago, when I did record in Mecca and Medina, was in response to uh, our Christian uh, missionary brothers in America, uh, um, Sam Shimon, David Wood, who made the video uh, uh, Islamicize Me. So I made response to that video from Mecca, Medina and Dubai. And again, uh, have it, having to do a response to some of the Muslim dais uh, is, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't have happened, but, you know, you will see why. So in terms of the introduction, uh, so my name is Hassan. I'm, I'm really a nobody. Um, but uh, I'm a nobody with, with opinions. Now, I live in the UK. I'm originally from Bangladesh. I did stand for Parliament in 2005 in the UK. Uh, so I'm still active within the uh, Conservative Party. I did work with the uh, what is known as Prevent, which is the, uh, the British counter-terrorism strategy. So I was a trainer uh, with them. And in my normal work, uh, I, I, I work in, uh, worked in pharmaceutical sales. Um, so uh, that's a brief introduction for me in terms of uh, the Dow field. I haven't really seen me much in the Dow field, but I've tried in my own way uh, to uh, give a bit of Dow. I'm not a scholar, you know, I'm uh, certainly not a knowledgeable. I uh, don't have that level of knowledge that the Dais and the scholars and the Imams have, the ones I'm going to respond to. Um, so that should be, you know, uh, taken into context. So why am I doing this video? Well, of course. Uh, uh, we will all have opinions uh, regarding the uh, Israel-Gaza uh, conflict. Um, what uh, we would actually agree on is uh, the fact that when Israel ha has cut off supplies to, to Gaza, that uh, a lot of people, hundreds of thousands of people, innocent civilians have been affected. And we would have no hesitation whatsoever to condemn Israel, would we? If we were to ask, uh, be asked the question, do you condemn Israel for what they've done in terms of uh, withdrawing supplies in Gaza or other things like settlements or uh, oppressing Palestinians? Uh, you would say, yes, we condemn Israel. Clear cut, you know, and I would agree with you. But if you if were to be asked, do you condemn Hamas, um, who actually triggered this particular conflict by firing 5,000 missiles, uh, kidnapping some civilians killing uh, and burning babies and decapitating decapitating some of the babies in the kibbutz do you uh, condemn that uh, uh, and i have not heard the condemnation from uh, the muslim scholars imams and dais that i would expect okay and this really is a, is a tragedy and uh, you may be asking well why am i so focused on condemning Hamas and killing innocent Jews, uh, well, Israelis, who were also 20% Arabs, Arab Muslim, uh, Israeli Muslims and Christians, but most of them Jews. Why am I so focused on that um, and not more on the retaliation where more Palestinians have died? And certainly this has been repeated a few times. Well, if you do not know the answer to this question, given that you have qualifications in, in uh, Islamic knowledge, your imams, your da'is, then you need to question your... Um, Qualifications are you you know are you qualified enough, qualified enough to become da'is and invite people to Islam? Uh, if you don't know the answer to this particular question, I will answer obviously. Um, so before I do that, uh, let me uh, respond to some of the Muslim scholars who I've uh, expected uh, would have condemned what uh, Hamas did, which is absolutely appalling. Um, so Sami Hamdi, 
Uh, I heard his interviews on Thinking Muslim and the Yakin Institute. Very articulate, mashallah, very, very good uh, articulate, uh, really precise uh, in his points. But I have not heard him condemn what Hamas actually did. Uh, yes, of course, we condemn what Israel did. Everyone w would, you know, we, we don't have a disagreement there. But what is stopping people like him from actually saying, look, what Hamas did in terms of killing innocent civilians is wrong. If you can say, look, you can, if you can condemn Israel for what they've done, okay, and I agree with you, why not condemn when our own people have done uh, something wrong? Um, so when uh, Sami Hamdi also said in one of the interviews, I, th I think, yeah, it was the Thinking Muslim, um, or even, no, the Yakin Institute, uh, the two other imams, um, uh, very, very passionate, um, very moving statements uh, he was making about changing public opinion uh, and uh, influencing the government officials. Uh, very good, alhamdulillah, and one of the imams uh, well, was in tears. Uh, he was really passionate. You know, uh, I re really respect the command of, of um, uh, the language and uh, the emotion that brings out. But the public opinion that I want to see from the Ummah is the one that says that Muslims, uh, Muslim countries, should recognize the state of Israel. Now, um, the UAE, alhamdulillah, the, it did recognize Israel in 2020. That was two years after I made the prayer. I made a dua, I made a video actually in Dubai where I said, look, uh, I was pointing towards Israel that the UAE, uh, it accepts uh, the state of Israel and two years later it did. Okay, uh, I'd like to claim credit uh, for that, but I don't think, you know, I'm, I'm a nobody, so I don't think they royal family uh, <laughs> looked at my video, but also uh, made a prayer that inshallah Saudi Arabia follows suit where the land of the prophet reaches out to the land of the prophets in Abrahamic brotherhood. Okay, and um, so in terms of public media, opinion, Hamas is very good at manipulating Muslim opinion, you know, so when we see the pictures of dead children, you know, you have to be a non-human not to be affected by uh, these pictures. So. Uh, with that in mind now, uh, the public opinion sh should be that um, we recognize the state of Israel so that there's peace once and for all, okay? Just have a look at those pictures of dead children, okay, from the Israeli side, you see the, uh, the kid children being affected, uh, suffered. But obviously, if you don't think much of Jewish lives, then obviously, yeah, look at the Palestinian lives where lots of Palestinians have been killed, especially children. Just look at those pictures and tell me and I dare you to tell me that fighting should continue, where lives will be lost on both sides. I dare you to do that. When you look at that picture, there's only one thing that should come to mind, and that is there should be peace. No more war, no more killing. Okay, that's what should have uh, crossed your mind. But from Sami Hamdi's um, uh, treaties, I did not actually hear that. It's just manipulating or rather influencing public opinion against the, uh, so that they can influence the rulers, uh, etc. If I'm gonna give advice to Prince uh, Mohammed bin Salman, um, I mean, Saudi Arabia was on the way to uh, recognize the state of Israel, but obviously this has scuppered everything up. He will need to go against uh, uh, popular uh, Muslim opinion because most Muslims, I think all of us, most of us will be manipulated by uh, what Hamas is doing and falling into their trap. Um, so his, if he does go ahead with the recognizing, normalizing relations with Israel, it will be very, very unpopular, very unpopular. But he has to do what is right, okay, for the future. Right meaning right in front of God's, Allah's eyes, not what uh, majority public opinion says or Muslim public opinion. Because what's gonna happen is when Muslim countries start recognizing the state of Israel, there'll be no more fighting. There's no need for Hamas to fire rockets, okay? Because Palestine, Palestinians will have a state of their own, which they deserve, uh, existing side by side with, with Israel. And there'll be no reason for Israel to retaliate 10 times as hard as they do where Palestinian lives get affected, okay? So when Palestinian lives uh, are killed, well, Hamas is partly to, uh, to blame. Blame Israel, yes, directly, and Hamas for prov provoking uh, them provoking the lion. Blood is on their hands. And I expected condemnation uh, here. So I totally disagree with Sami Hamdi. I think um, the Saudi uh, Crown Prince, he needs to do what is right for the future because in future they will actually look back and say, yeah, he was on the right side of history because peace has broken out and more importantly under Abrahamic Brotherhood, the Abrahamic principles in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, because that has been absent.
Religion has been absent in the last 25 years. It's always been about politics, land, greed, uh, and that's it, and fighting. And this is the Holy Land, and the holy principles are not being applied. Well, this is a chance. So that was Hamdi Hamdi. Hussam Zomlot is a Palestinian ambassador to the UK, of course. Uh, he refused to condemn Hamas, pivoting to the, well, look what Israel has done uh, to us, uh, Palestinians, oppression. And again, I, I agree with that. But there's that obstacle of not being able to condemn what Hamas did to provoke uh, the retaliation by killing, uh, targeting civilians, which is not allowed. Uh, look at Linda Sarsour, Ilhan Omar, Congresswoman Cla Rashida Tlaib in America. Uh, they refuse to condemn Hamas uh, for their terrorist acts. Again, they're happy to condemn Israel. And yes, I will agree to a certain extent uh, when they've killed Palestinians, oppressed, you know, the settlers, etc. But when you see just uh, injustice happen, even from your own people, you should actually call it out. But they're afraid. Uh, Yasser Qadi, now he's interesting. I, I do follow uh, him. I watch his lectures, mashallah. They're very, very good. And I still recommend his, his lectures. And one of the best lectures he delivered was on Karbala, the, the tragedy of Karbala. But very recently, in the, in the context of the Gaza conflict, he's been really, really angry, really passionate. And I totally disagree with his uh, analysis. Um, uh, yes, obviously be passionate about the plight of the people in Gaza, but obviously point fingers yeah, at Israel. But point fingers at Hamas were meant to be looking after the people in Gaza when they took control in 2006. What did they do with the uh, funds, with the billions of dollars that have been pouring in to that region? They should be invested in healthcare, education, um, uh, investment. Instead, we see uh, they were investing in missiles and trying to kill innocent people. That should have been condemned. And Yassi Kadi, he, he calls a spade a spade. Okay, so he says it as it is. He should not be afraid. Yet for some reason, he did not condemn Hamas. The, what Hamas has done quite adroitly now was to fuse the, Palestine, the genuine Palestinian struggle with Hamas. They've been intertwined now. So when Palestinians want to raise the flag in pride, they can't do that because we're in many Western countries now because that flag has been equated with the Hamas terrorism and that, that should be separated. You know, there was a genuine case for a Palestinian state, a, a struggle, but Hamas has completely hijacked that and as well as hijacking the Muslim world. So when we saw the leader of Hamas praying and asking all the Muslims to unite, you know, and carry out the prophetic mission, what prophetic mission? Okay. Since when was it a part of Islam to kill innocent people? Okay. So I ask you again, uh, if you're still going through your mind, uh, why is Hassan uh, so focused on condemning Hamas and uh, instead of looking at what Israel has done? Well, you know, I agree with you in terms of what Israel has done. That's why there's not much to disagree on. And if you don't know the answer to this question, as I said before, you, are, you do not deserve to be imams. So you're not qualified. And I'll obviously come to the answer. Haitam al Haddad, again, a prayer for um, uh, supporting Ga Gazan people. Um, he's part of the Islam 21C organization in the UK. Um, I do get their bulletins, the, the weekly newsletters. Um, but I don't really think much of that organization. Um, they're just very anti government, anti Western or British government, uh, thinking that everything is a conspiracy uh, or whatever. Um, I took an issue with uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Haitam al Haddad a few years ago during COVID when he did not agree with the uh, locking down um, of, of mosques so, so people can't uh, congregate. So I wrote a reply to, to, to him on that why he was wrong. But certainly he should have condemned Hamas, uh, which he didn't, being an imam and a, a scholar. Uh, Zakir Naik, um, again, someone I really, really respect. Uh, he's known as Didat Plus. And. Um, so, again, what, what did he um, do in terms of um, his opinion, sharing his opinion about Gaza? He did not condemn Hamas. And this is an absolute disgrace for someone who's so influential um, and bringing people to Islam. You should know what, what the correct way is of engaging with, uh, with the enemies. And that's why it, it was very um, disappointing. And now, he did say we pray for Gaza. Of course, yeah, we should all pray. The people of Gaza are suffering, as well as those innocent civilians uh, in Israel, who have suffered under the Hamas rockets and the children who have been killed. Inshallah, go to paradise, you know, the children on both sides. Um, but it was an absolute shame that Zakir Naik, he did not condemn Hamas. I mean, again, he, he's the type of person who would not be afraid of anyone. He condemned America for the bombing of Iraq, definitely. 
Um, so you can condemn the governments, but you're not condemning when someone you're, from your own side uh, does the injustice. And this is an absolute tragedy. Uh, but I still respect uh, Inozaki Naik because um, uh, when he was banned uh, in the UK, I wrote to the then uh, Home Secretary, uh, Theresa May, to lift the ban because someone like Zaki Naik needs to come to the UK and he is one of the people can t who can steer people away from extremism. Uh, but I only got a standard reply from the border force, uh, which was very standard. I, I didn't address the direct things I was saying. So I hope, inshallah, Zaki Naik does come back to the UK. He gets permission. But uh, I think his understanding of politics uh, is, is very, uh, you know, much to be desired uh, when he says in one of his talks that the 9-11 tax was, was an inside job because of one of the professors of Bingham, of Bingham Young University uh, said that uh, there was uh, an explosion, uh, a bomb. Um, so that was evidence for Zachary Knight to make that claim. And that claim has been um, dismissed, you know. Uh, so, uh, and also when he talked about Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda, that he's not his Osama is not his friend, he's not his enemy, does doesn't hate him, doesn't like him. He said that uh, over about two decades ago, but a decade later he says exactly the same thing, not knowing that in that interim there were many many scholars in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia and scholars beyond who had condemned Al Qaeda and Osama bin Laden for being Khawarij. Uh, the sheikh, uh, uh, the highest jurist in Saudi Arabia, said a few years ago uh, that uh, ISIS, I think, was the number one enemy. You know, uh, Sheikh Al Sheikh. You know, so uh, this is an absolute tragedy that Zakir Naik hasn't condemned Hamas when he should have done. Condemn Israel? Yes, Hamas. Well, you know, why are you so afraid? Um, Zakir Naik also recommended um, to write to politicians and MPs, and I totally agree with that, but I'm certainly writing to Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman that the process of normalizing uh, ties between Saudi Arabia and Israel must accelerate. Look at the big picture, look at the future, where lives are saved, and when there is peace under Abrahamic Brotherhood, mashallah, then how can that be an act of kufr? Okay, so you really need to think uh, here. Um, Sheikh Asim Al Hakim, uh, I, I love his lectures. Uh, we see him on Peace TV again. Praying for Gaza is fine, but no condemnation of uh, what Hamas did to provoke this. Uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf in America, um, he got into a bit of trouble when his Sheikh, I think Sheikh bin Bayer, um, who also is on the Fit Council of uh, was it America or was it the UAE? I can't remember now. Uh, but the Sheikh bin Bayer did um, support the UAE for recognizing the state of Israel, and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, I think, uh, he distanced himself from that, and he, and he shouldn't have distanced himself. He should have gone full in to support the UAE. Uh, why would you not want to normalize ties with Israel? Uh, it is an absolute fallacy. Um, and if we're talking about land rights, well, the children of Abraham, of Ishmael and Isaac, al -Islam, they have the right to, to live in the land. Um, so it is a land for both peoples, not one. It's not just for Jews alone. Uh, it's not just for Arabs alone or Muslims and Christians alone. It is for the Abrahamic faiths. You know, that's what you know, you're failing to understand. So Sheikh Hamza Yusuf should have again condemned uh, Hamas. And a lot of the scholars I've just mentioned, they did condemn ISIS. They condemned Al-Qaeda for some reason when Hamas does exactly the same thing, targeting civilians. And uh, I'm trying to confirm the reports of the decapitation of babies. If that is true, if that turns out to be true, and burning them, how dare you remain silent? You talk about, you know, speaking up, but well, why not speak up against uh, Hamas uh, when they've uh, clearly killed civilians and taken women and children as hostages? Where is your Iman? Where is your belief and your faith in Allah? And yes, I'm a, a nobody. I'm not a qualified Imam. But I have the right to take you to ta task. Uh, Noman Ali Khan, oh well, he hasn't really said much. I've looked at his uh, videos, so fine. Uh, Mufti Menk, again, he's uh, very influential, very good. Um, he did uh, uh, see or uh, meet with a rabbi, I think the chief rabbi of, Israel, uh, uh, of the UAE, a couple of years ago, a year ago, uh, during Ramadan. Uh, I think it was Rabbi. No, it begins with a D. Um, I'll probably put it in the uh, caption when I uh, edit the video, inshallah. Um, 
uh, so, which was very good, you know, uh, a Ramadan meal, evening iftar meal uh, with him. But he got a lot of blowback from many Muslims. Why did you meet a Zionist? And he had so much pressure that he had to issue an apology video uh, saying, sorry, you know, he didn't know he was speaking to a Zionist, etc. Allah Almighty, forgive all of us. I'm not trying to justify anything. Like I say, if anyone feels betrayed, and to my brothers and sisters in Palestine, and my brothers and sisters in Kashmir, my brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, and anyway, if I have ever said anything or done anything that makes you feel or made you feel, or anyone else for that matter, betrayed, trust me, I apologize unconditionally. But my pushback to him, to Mufti Meng, will be, how dare you apologize to, to, for doing what was absolutely in your rights and as, as, as a Muslim to share a meal with, uh, with a Jew, with a rabbi, and talk about religion, uh, about Islam and Judaism. How dare you apologize to Muslims for engaging in dawah, you know, which I hope you were doing. Now recently when I looked at your video about um, <clears throat> Gaza, yes, obviously like all the other Imams, and I agree with all of you on this, uh, you're praying for uh, Gaza that Allah uh, lifts uh, the, uh, the burden that's currently on them, they've got no problem there. But again, from Mufti Menk, I was ex expecting that you'd condemn Hamas and the terrorist actions that took place. Okay. Um, I'm sure there are other scholars uh, I've, I've missed out, but these are the ones I've just uh, listed. So why am I being so uh, pedantic about this? Well, you should have condemned Hamas, whereas you, you know, you're know condemn, condemning Israel. Well, why am I focusing, focusing on Hamas? Well, because if you haven't worked it out already, you know, you should really question your qualifications that you have, you haven't worked it out. Because we have higher principles set down by a creator, and you know this. So when some of you quoted some of the Quranic verses about patience, etc., you failed to mention some of the Quranic verses that relate to, um, you know, chapter 5, verse 8, you know, not, not being unjust and not hating someone so that you're, you're unjust. Or chapter 2, verse 190, you know, um, you, you forgot about those. And I think if you believe that, uh, like a lot of anti-Islam critics like Robert Spencer or David Wood, uh, they always bring up the argument that the Meccan verses are replaced by the Medinan verses, uh, which are more violent than the Meccan verses, so they're abrogated. You and I know that that's completely not true. So those verses I've just referenced are still valid, okay? But you, you didn't bother to um, uh, quote that. But I will actually give some credit to uh, uh, Brother Muhammad Hijab. He did actually, he was the first da'i I came across who actually did condemn the innocent killing, uh, the murder of um, people in, in Israel. He didn't uh, go to the extent of condemning Hamas directly, but he did condemn the killing of innocent people, which is an in, indirect uh, criticism of Hamas. So Alhamdulillah, which is fine, I'll reward him for that. And his interview with Piers Morgan was actually quite good. Uh, very funny. I, I love uh, Mohammed, Mohammed Hijab's uh, put downs or slap down uh, when he tells uh, some some people, you know, look at me, look at me, I'm going to slap you. You know, that is the best put down I've come across from Mohammed Hijab. And that was the, uh, I think the the thought process uh, that was um, happening when uh, he interviewed. He was interviewed by Piers Morgan. I think Piers Morgan didn't know how to handle it. So that was a really good interview. But I praise Mohammed Hijab for actually at least saying that uh, killing innocent people is wrong. And uh, he had a big issue in another video uh, with uh, Ben Shapiro of uh, Daily Wire. So I was a member of Daily Wire. Uh, it's a very good conservative organization in America. I think there's a lot of uh, common principles. And I think, uh, again, Ben Shapiro was really hyper angry after the Hamas attacks, understandably so. So there needs to be a cool, calm, level-headed dialogue between Mohammed Hijab and Ben Shapiro, uh, because a lot of people will benefit. A lot of people did benefit from the discussion with uh, Jordan Peterson, which is really, really good, alhamdulillah. But we need to have those uh, level-headed dialogues uh, without any anger and emotion. So I'd urge uh, Mohammed Hijab and uh, Ben Shapiro to, to engage in that discussion. Oh, I have to give some credit to the ex-Guantanamo um, inmate, uh, what's his name, uh, Muazzam Beg. Um, he, again, appeared on, I think it was Thinking Muslim, a podcast. Uh, it was a 54-minute uh, interview, but in minute 33, 33 minutes, he did actually say, well, it's against Islamic principles to kill uh, innocent uh, people. 
um, he did say that, uh, but he did try to give some leeway to Hamas, saying, oh, well, Hamas probably made a mistake, etc., without the actual condemnation which I was looking for. But nevertheless, he did actually say this is against uh, Islam. So I'm very surprised that you Imams, scholars and Da'is, you did not bother to quote the specific Quranic verses I just mentioned and also the Hadith. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Ibn Majah, uh, do not cause harm nor return harm. Okay, can you explain how that applies to Hamas? Uh, in his sword, according to Al-Bayhaqi, he had a sword inscription that said, verily the worst of people in insolence are those who strike at whoever did not strike them, a man who kills those who did not fight him. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who's the greatest man after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi the first caliph, he said, when giving instructions to his people, uh, his army, you will find a people who claim to have totally given themselves to God. Leave them to what they claim to have given themselves. Do not kill women or children or an aged, infirm person. Do not cut down fruit-bearing trees. Do not destroy an inhabited place. Do not slaughter sheep or camels except for food. Do not burn bees and do not scatter them. Do not steal from the spoils and do not be cowardly. That's from Malik ibn Anas. Why were when these not quoted? Okay, so what use is your qualification and doing all the dawah when you refuse to condemn what the terrorists of Hamas actually did? Because some of you did condemn Al-Qaeda and ISIS, rightly so, and Allah reward you for that. And you fail to quote all of these uh, Quranic verses and Hadith, <clears throat> uh, you know, which restrict us from actually killing, targeting innocent civilians, let alone um, burning them. Uh, taking them as hostages, raping women, that's absolutely uh, disgraceful. And this is one of the proofs that Islam is from the Creator, because only He can reveal something like this that can restrict us human beings. Because no one, otherwise, when we're left unrestricted, we, we do what uh, Hamas actually did and what Israel is doing, uh, killing retali in retaliation. So my dying warning to you, to, uh, scholars, is to man up, to grow some, uh, condemn Hamas straight away and uh, inshallah I hope that um, more Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia reach out uh, to, to Israel uh, so we can recognize it uh, inshallah as a Jewish state that has a right to exist uh, alongside a Palestinian state that has a right to exist and you for saying that this is an act of kufr um, so when Pakistan was created in 1948 was that uh, an act of kufr because uh, the partition of India was done without the consent of the people and there was mass migration mass exodus the nakba of muslims and christians in that region <clears throat> they had no consent but today a lot of muslim countries recognize the state of india as a hindu country what about spain when muslims were kicked out by ferdinand and isabella in 1492 in hundreds of years ago so are we say and we recognize spain now as a christian country so is that an act of kufr as well so why isolating um, Israel as a Jewish state and if you're saying that the land was taken well yes there is a right to return for the Palestinians during the Nakba to return home that's fine but that still doesn't preclude why Israel should not exist and uh, what what connects us all of us Muslims and non-Arabs to, to Medina Mecca it is our the religion it's the holiest site what connects us uh, who are non-Arabs to Jerusalem because it's the third holiest site when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to heaven what connects uh, Jews to uh, the Holy Land? You know, it, it is it is that land. It is holy. It's Jerusalem. So it's holy for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. So let a Jewish state exist, you know, um, and let peace uh, break out. Because when you look at the children, uh, the picture of uh, dead children, there's only one conclusion that there should be peace. No more killing. Okay. If you do not agree with that, if you think uh, there should be more struggle, more fighting that what you're doing is you're aiding and abetting more killing of innocent uh, uh, children <clears throat> from the Israeli side and obviously more from the Palestinian side. There is no other option but peace under Abrahamic principles. Um, because I'll ask yourself, what would Prophet Abraham want? What would Isaac and Ishmael, uh, alayhi salam, what would they want? Muhammad, alayhi salam, uh, Jesus, alayhi salam. What would they want? I mean, Muhammad, alayhi salam, when he went and made that uh, night journey, to Jerusalem, <clears throat> he prayed with the prophets, and there's no fighting between them. So why can't we achieve that state of brotherhood under Abrahamic principles in Israel, Palestine? 
So my challenge to you uh, is to, to respond to what I've said. I know what I've said. It cannot be contradicted intellectually. And in the comments, I'll also put in a letter I've written, an open letter to Hamas. Um, <clears throat> again, I expect uh, that you would support. And inshallah, when Saudi Arabia does, and uh, actually well, I'm in Medina now at the time of recording, about two days ago, the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, he did visit Saudi Arabia. Uh, to meet with the uh, king, uh, with the prince, uh, MBS. <clears throat> when I heard about it, I was in my bed uh, in here in, in the hotel in Medina. I quickly texted one of the uh, of Prime Minister Sunak's aides, and I said, "Look, make sure, <coughs> make sure that the process of normalisation between Saudi Arabia and Israel uh, is accelerated because that is needed quite urgently." So I hope they've uh, heard that advice. And certainly, I'll, um, inshallah, be writing to the Prince to accelerate the process of normalization, inshallah. Okay, thanks for listening. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Yeah, so you can see it's uh, just after Maghrib, uh, outside the Prophet's Mosque, and you see the moon as well. Uh, it's quite nice, uh, nice atmosphere. Um, so I forgot to um, mention this, that's why I'm inserting this in the uh, video I made. Uh, and that is, uh, I forgot to mention Brother Hakika Jew. Uh, now, he's, he's an asset, I'd say, to, to Dawa. I've been following him over the last year or so. Uh, some really good debates he's been involved in, really valuable. Uh, didn't like some of the uh, skirmishes, you know, between him and some of the other uh, Dawa <laughs> brothers. It was a bit of a circus. But the recent debate uh, he had with uh, uh, Daniel, sorry, Robert Spencer uh, in a podcast hosted, hosted, by a, hosted by a Christian brother was really, really good. Uh, but uh, I was really, really disappointed when he himself, Dawa Brother Daniel, did not condemn Hamas. All he could do was uh, put a, a Palestinian flag and, uh, and that, that was it. And obviously um, appeared to give support to what uh, Hamas is doing. Uh, but uh, for someone like him, he doesn't mince words. He says, he calls a spade a spade. He's the, the type of person who's not afraid of anyone. And I'm sure he'd be, he'd be open enough to condemn uh, Israel for what they've done, uh, the Israeli government. But why, like some of these other scholars I mentioned, is not man enough to condemn what Hamas did, which is completely against uh, Islam, against the Quran and the Sunnah. It, it is blindingly obvious. So what is it about Hamas that uh, uh, Brother Daniel and the other, some, the other scholars are, are paying lip service to? They cut contradiction between what Hamas's actions have been and what the Quran and the Sunnah say. So that's why I say, um, when you guys give dawah, you are imams of the of the mosques, uh, you guide the, the ummah, uh, you should not be afraid to condemn uh, and call out injustice when you see it, when it's especially comes from us. And there's a Quranic verse that says, call out uh, against uh, injustice or call out for justice, even if it's against your own parents. So, uh, you know, you should not be afraid of uh, losing your flock, your followers, uh, all of us, you, me, and me included, I advise myself uh, as well, we should be afraid of uh, our creator, and, and that's it. So I still invite you and challenge uh, these respected imams and scholars. Um, why are you uh, paying lip service to uh, what Hamas has done that triggered the uh, retaliation? And uh, if you think that the creation of Israel is, uh, or the recognition of Israel is an act of kufr or haram, then you need to explain why, because it doesn't make sense at all. Okay, so uh, inshallah, um, but despite what I said and despite the criticisms I've given you, uh, in Allah give you paradise, you know, and I wish that for you, families, inshallah, and uh, make dua here for uh, the people of Gaza uh, who are suffering as a result of the Israeli retaliation, but also the, uh, the Jewish civilians especially those who have died, children, may, may they be in paradise as well. Children are the silent victims here. And we have to do every, everything we can to make sure children live as children in future. And that is why peace is the only solution under Abrahamic Brotherhood. Um, and uh, what was very concerning about what Daniel said uh, in his criticism of the Abrahamic Accords, he's saying this is all a distraction away from Islam, but did Mufti Mink really explain having iftar with this rabbi? Not at all. 
First of all, this is not some random rabbi. This is the chief rabbi at the core of Israel normalization in the UAE. Second of all, let's get some context. After the Abraham Accords, the UAE has pushed normalization with Israel and promoted this kufr idea of the unity of all Abrahamic religions. They want to say Islam is all about tolerance, and whoever has a problem with Israel is spreading hatred and extremism. The UAE government has invited Mank to add legitimacy to this project. Yes or no? Yes or no? Why can't you say no? Can you condemn normalization with Israel? No, it's all the time because why is it? No, who's worse than you? The Quraysh who killed the Sahaba or the Zionists who killed the Muslims? No, 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 no. It's a good time. Quraysh. Okay. Why person makes peace treaty with them? That's a sulh based on them not killing any more Sahaba. No, no. The Treaty of Hudaybiyah was based on not killing. No, no. The Treaty of Hudaybiyah is not the same as normalizing relations with Israel. Normalizing relations with Israel means that these Muslim countries resume ties, economic ties, with the terrorist state while the Muslims are being killed. This is precisely what was needed, was the Abrahamic values, which are, which are religious values. Because so far, secularism has, has been the platform for the discourse between Jews, Christians and Muslims and Palestinians. But once we can unite on Abrahamic principles, which is uh, from the principles, common principles of uh, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, then that is the way forward. And for someone like Brother Daniel to completely uh, dismember that initiative is a really, really big concern because if you're not going to agree with religious principles be, being uh, included here in this discourse moving forward, and all you're doing is just um, uh, supporting the status quo, fighting counter-offensive, uh, and more being killed on both sides. And that is not an option. So I'd seriously advise Daniel to, to think about what he said about the Abraham Accords. So inshallah, Allah bless all of you, all of us, inshallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, well, I'm uh, back in London now, so you can see the uh, part of the uh, London uh, skyline, which is uh, great. But my favorite city on earth is Medina. Um, now, um, when I did record what I did uh, in Medina, obviously it was a bit haphazard. I couldn't do a full uh, proper recording uh, because there were so, so many things uh, going on. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just continue from what I was saying uh, whilst I was in Medina when I criticised and really called out those particular scholars, imams and da'is who should have uh, uh, known better uh, than uh, implicitly support uh, Hamas, which is what you did because you do not condemn their actions, which is absolutely despicable. No, so let me just continue with what I wanted to say uh, and expand on a couple of things that I've mentioned before in the video. Uh, so back to brother Dr. Zakir Naik. So he's been one of my fa favorite uh, da'is, uh, a really good debater. Um, I understand why he's known as DDAT+. Plus. Now, um, he may vaguely uh, remember me. Uh, he came to London in 2006 when he visited the Harrow uh, Convention Centre, I think it was, in Harrow. And his topic was on education. And at, at the end, during question and answer, I did come uh, to the mic to ask him a question. I couldn't find that video on YouTube. Um, so obviously it'll be in his um, in the company's uh, Peace TV's records. So uh, I was clean shaven at the time. I think I look pretty similar as I did in 2006. And I asked him a, a couple of questions. Uh, one of them was uh, what his thought was on um, some of the uh, Muslim extremists who had uh, called me a kafir because I stood for parliament uh, in, two, in 2005. Uh, now, Dr. Nike's answer didn't really answer the, uh, the question. Um, he did mention the Hadith about if someone calls another person kafir, then one does become... One of them is definitely a, a kafir. Um, so that was me. Okay, so that, that, that was me. I asked that question. Um, now, in terms of, um, since I made the video in Medina, I, I want to come back to the UK. I've had a look at other updated videos from Zakir Naik, and uh, he um, made a video about a 13-point uh, plan for, for Gaza. Uh, some of them included uh, praying for the... <coughs> Uh, people of Gaza, you know, waking up at Tahajjud, and yeah, I, I agree with that. And uh, praying for the uh, martyrs. 
So by that, uh, I mean, you, you have to expand on that because if you mean Hamas, who've you know, killed and targeted civilians, killed civilians, uh, they're not martyrs and if they die uh, in uh, counterattacks. I'm assuming you mean, I mean the, the ordinary people you know, who always get caught up in these things, the, civil, the ordinary Palestinian civilians, children especially. I keep on mentioning children. May Allah give them paradise. Um, but also, I'd expect that your prayers and, you know, if they're at Hajjur or whatever time, is also directed to those um, uh, civilians, uh, Israeli civilians who've died, that Allah bless their families, and those Israeli children who have actually been killed and burned and decapitated, that they are prayed for as well. You make dua for them as well, that they reach, or well, that they are in paradise, you know, children are children. You know, <laughs> and we know what they are, what the state is uh, before the parents uh, change them. So, uh, you know, the fact that you've only been one sided, it does beg the question, are Jewish lives less than Palestinian lives? You know, uh, you probably think that uh, the way uh, the Israeli government has um, oppressed Palestinians and in their retaliation, uh, the retaliation is tenfold. So obviously more more casualties there. And you probably have the understanding that from an Israeli government's point of view, Palestinian lives uh, are less worthy than uh, Israeli lives, which is why more Palestinians are killed in bombardments, even though the IDF does actually warn them in advance to, to, to leave. And Hamas, for some reason, prevents them. Um... But it's actually the other way around. The fact that you're, you're refusing even to acknowledge that Israeli civilians have been killed and that uh, babies, um, uh, Jewish uh, Israeli babies have been killed and you know we should pray for them. That's what I was expecting from you as well. Pray for the Palestinians, alhamdulillah. There's no disagreement there. So this is really, really worrying because you need to consider are you, are you being just or not? As, as the Quran says, you know, be just. You know, that is the basis uh, of uh, of our religion. So uh, again, now uh, when uh, Doctor Brother Naik um, talked about uh, boycotting uh, Israel, so that m most Muslim countries or Muslim majority countries should boycott, boycott Israel, I do think you can do that actually, um, because I know there is a uh, boycott, divestment, sanction movement, uh, but that really is based on absolute hypocrisy. There's absolutely no way you can boycott uh, Israel without making some serious sacrifices which you are not willing to make. I'm not just talking about uh, Brother Naik, but I'm talking about everyone else watching this video who believe in sanctioning in Israel. You will not be, I mean, your actions will be the complete opposite to what you believe in terms of sanctioning. What do I mean by that? Well, in terms of the uh, technologies that have been created, which uh, we, all of us, use, uh, all of that, either all of that technology or some of that technology has been invented in Israel. Okay, so if you as anti-Israel or uh, the boycotting movement are really true to your words, uh, you should be boycotting uh, technologies like the instant messenger service, okay, uh, Viber, uh, USB flash drives, computers, firewalls, voice calls over the internet, uh, baby sense, um, this is something that I used when my daughter was born. It's a an equipment, um, a breathing detector for babies. And you know, you've heard about cough, cot to deaths that do happen, which are cannot be explained. But that invention was made to detect uh, irregular, irregularities in, in breathing and set off an alarm if breathing has stopped, which is a lifesaver. Uh, iPhones, uh, you know, the face ID uh, uh, security uh, you see on your phone and uh, quite a few other inventions as well. Either all of them or some of that technology came from Israel. <coughs> so if you want to boycott Israel, you need to stop using all of those things I've mentioned. Will you be able to do that? And no, you won't. I know you won't. So that's why it is. it smacks of absolute hypocrisy that you're going to use these technologies, part of which have been invented in Israel, and then you seek uh, for the whole world to, to, to boycott. You know, the absolute sacrifice for you would be to do away with all of those technologies. Okay, then I will sit up and listen. Then you'll have a point uh, in your argument for boycotting Israel. But you don't, obviously. So that's uh, the boycott argument. And uh, um, Brother Nike mentioned something about some countries recognizing Israel. And I think I did mention in my Medina video that when I was in Dubai uh, in 2018, I made a prayer.
that uh, inshallah that the UAE recognizes the state of Israel and they did two years later and I further down I also prayed I made dua that uh, Saudi Arabia does recognize the state of Israel now Prince Salman uh, MBS he was uh, I think in the process of normalizing with Israel obviously Hamas has completely scuppered all of that and uh, so my advice to the Muslim governments is you need to um, uh, establish normalized ties with Israel, increase trade between the Jews uh, and the Arabs. I did write somewhere, and I'll probably put the link as well in, in the comments of some articles I've written about Israel and Palestine, uh, where politicians have failed. Ordinary Muslims, Christians and Jews can actually help each other from, from the ground up. Establish uh, business links, you know. Uh, Jewish, uh, Jewish shops that e exist in other countries should stock uh, produce from the Palestinian areas, you know, help your Palestinian brothers. Also, Arab shops uh, should uh, should uh, stock Israeli goods as well. Help your Jewish brothers there, uh, as well as your Arab and uh, you know Christian brothers who are Israelis as well. That's how you're going to uh, increase uh, bonds. So that's what you should be doing. And I have written to Prince uh, MBS to accelerate the process of normalization with Israel. So Saudi Arabia must recognize the state of Israel, the land of the prophet, recognizing the land of the prophets in Abrahamic brotherhood. So obviously that is the key foundation here, are the principles of Abraham, alayhi salam. Yeah, so that needs to be accelerated. And what I did mention in the letter to Prince Salman is if he did go ahead with that, um, most of the Muslim world will probably go against him. He will go against public opinion, the Muslim public opinion, and you know this includes uh, brother Zakir Naik. But unfortunately, a lot, a lot of the Muslims, because we, we, you know, we are very emotional. We are, our critical thinking has gone completely kaput compared to the Ummah of, of yesterday when we were at the height of civilization. Um, so, because we're um, manipulated uh, by uh, the likes of Hamas, you know. Um, you know, we, we, that has clouded our judgment on what is the actual solution. The actual solution is peace. There can be no more killing. And I've asked you to, in my previous Medina video, to look at the faces of the children who have, been, who have died. Okay, if you don't care about Jewish children, fine, put them to, 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 to one side. Look at the Palestinian children. Look at the Muslim children who have died in the Israeli bombardment. Uh, look again. Do you ha do, don't you feel, okay that this must never, ever happen again. You feel that, don't you? So why do you support, implicitly, the continuation of fighting when you know there will be mass casualties on both sides? Peace is the answer. So if uh, Muslim countries and Muslims generally recognize the state of Israel and also recognize the state of Palestine, okay, self-determination, um, Palestine has a right to exist, then um, that's how peace is, is going to break out. Muslims, Jews, Christians, and people of other faiths or no faith living in peace in the Holy Land under Abrahamic principles. Okay. Now, what uh, Hamas uh, has done is completely obliterate, not just killing civilians and kidnapping and uh, burning some of them, but obliterated the genuine Palestinian struggle of achieving a Palestinian state, a genuine struggle. Um, and this is something that has uh, the scholars, the Da'i's Imam, you have not been able to separate out Hamas from the Palestinian struggle there. You've fused the two. Uh, and it's unfortunate because uh, the Palestinians, if, if they want to wave the flag in pride in Western countries, that's now being restricted because um, the, the understanding is that this flag now represents Hamas, which it doesn't. So Palestinians should completely dissociate from Hamas completely and condemn Hamas or what it's done, and especially from the 7th of October onwards that's triggered this uh, conflict, this war, whatever label you want to use it. Um, uh, the, you know, the, the Hamas has completely destroyed the Palestinian, the genuine Palestinian uprising or, or the, the genuine Palestinian struggle for a state. Um, again, so coming back to uh, Zakir Naik, he was very, you know, he, he's the type of man who does not mean words. Uh, he'll call a spade a spade, which is great. He, um, he'll condemn uh, America, he'll condemn Israel, but for some reason you're not condemning Hamas. And 
in that sense, I would say Ahmed Didat, Sheikh Didat, he, uh, may Allah give him paradise, he had more balls, actually, um, than, than you, uh, Brother Nike. Because I remember in 1990 when he came to the UK, and this was just uh, when Gulf War I had uh, started, when Saddam Hussein invaded uh, Kuwait, uh, Didat may call a spade a spade. He called uh, Saddam Hussein Shaitan Sadab, which is exactly right. When Saddam Hussein did something wrong to invade Kuwait, kill innocent people, you know, you call it out. You know, you don't support Saddam Hussein, you uh, condemn him. And so Ahmad Dida did exactly that. I, I commended him for that. Um, and when he came to Southall Mosque uh, in West London, he mentioned uh, Shaitan Saddam. Uh, during question and answer, I did ask, well, uh, don't you think that the American troops are out there also? Uh, evil, you know, uh, killing some people, and he agreed one hundred percent as well. There, that, so at least he, he was even-handed. And in the case of Zakir Naik and the other brothers I've just mentioned, uh, the fact that you fail completely to condemn Hamas's action is uh, beyond deplorable. Um, what about uh, the um, Yakin Institute? Uh, I, I mentioned a, a bit during the Medina video. I uh, forgot to mention uh, uh, brother uh, Imam Omar, Omar Suleiman. Uh, he's also, you know, prayed for Gaza, etc. And him and a few other brothers at the Yaki Institute are, have been labelled, not by, <laughs> by me, but I think it was by Daniel Hakikaju, that these are the compassionate imams. So I think the word compassionate was used pejoratively, uh, that they're too willy, you know, wishy-washy. Uh, and I think their alignment with the progressives, uh, the left um, uh, campaigners in America, is absolutely disastrous um, and that may partly explain why especially in America the Imams have re refused to condemn Hamas because the, the left wing the progressives you know led by Linda Sarsour and you have uh, Ilhan Congresswoman Ilhan Omar Rashida Tlaib um, they uh, they've got Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez um, they're very, you know, socialist inclined, left wing, uh, you know, by any means necessary. You know, the Mal Malcolm X before he became Muslim. That's the uh, attitude they have. OK, so that's why the, these people will not condemn Hamas. Uh, they'll just blame Israel for all the oppression they've been doing. So I think part of that has, has filtered down to those so-called compassionate imams where they refuse to uh, condemn Hamas. And I would expect someone like uh, Omar Suleiman to, to have done that. But, but clearly, no. Uh, they, they've been bamboozled, just like these other brothers, uh, by the magic of, of, of uh, Hamas. Now, wh what I find very ironic, when I uh, look at the Ahmadi community, the Ahmadi uh, Muslims, and I've been tracking uh, a lot of the recent dialogues and discussions I've been having with the brothers at uh, Dawawai, so we've been engaging with the Ahmadis, Mashallah, really, really good engagement. Um, may Allah reward the um, Dawais uh, brothers and also uh, bless the Ahmadi uh, missionaries. I hope, you know, they uh, do do embrace the correct uh, Islam. But what is really interesting about the Ahmadi community, when I, I looked at their video about the Israel-Hamas uh, conflict, uh, the war that's going on, um, in one of their streams, uh, straight away, within a few minutes, uh, they did condemn what Hamas did, uh, based on Islamic principles, on the Quran, the Sunnah, uh, the Hadith, uh, which uh, command us Muslims uh, not to uh, harm innocent civilians. So they were there straight, straight on. Uh, what is quite interesting and quite disturbing is the Ahmadis. This is a community that has got it completely wrong in terms of theology in recognizing Mirza Ghulam Ahmed as a prophet, uh, which obviously is, is uh, in, incorrect, and um, withdrawing or uh, when Mirza Ghulam Ahmed uh, banned uh, jihad, which he has no right to do. It is an Islamic principle. They've got it completely wrong on the theology, but they've got it 100% correct on the political analysis, understanding and interpretation of what's happening in Gaza and calling it a spade a spade, condemning Hamas when it should be condemned. And they did that, and I, I credit them for that. I'll uh, bless them for, for doing that, for standing up. Of course, 
um, that they condemn uh, what Israel has done uh, in response, uh, cutting off uh, supplies, etc. And we, I think, we're all on the same the same page here. Um, so, in contrast, so whilst the Ahmadis have got the theology wrong and the politic, uh, the politics right, and the con condemnation of Hamas right, we see the the other scholars, the Sunni scholars that I've just mentioned, they got the theology is completely right, but the pol politics completely wrong. Uh, by failing to condemn Hamas. It's just amazing contrast here. John, I hope you found the videos that I made uh, have been useful. It certainly will be a minority opinion, but uh, one day, the I think, uh, if uh, Prince Salman can actually recognise the state of Israel, uh, that's going to go a long way for, for more Muslim countries to recognise Israel and there'll be peace between Jews, Christians and, and Muslims. There does not have to be Armageddon, okay? <clears throat> uh, yes, that is predicted. Uh, the the Jah will come, then the second coming of Jesus, Alayhi Salaam, and then, uh, you know, the Mahdi. We, we all know this. But um, it doesn't mean that we have to create the environment where this is going to happen. We can still have peace. So whilst um, the majority of the Muslim uh, world will not agree uh, with Saudi Arabia recognizing Israel, uh, I've I've told Prince Salman that you know this is to be expected, but in future, inshallah, when people live in peace, when the children who are going to be born and live as children, not die as victims, when they all look back uh, and uh, look at the historic moment when Saudi Arabia recognised Israel, that people were living under the Abrahamic Brotherhood, they will they are the ones who will thank uh, Prince Salman because this will be the most significant historic uh, thing that any Gulf ruler, Middle Eastern ruler, has done since the fall of the Ottoman Sultanate. This peace has been ushered, something that other leaders uh, have failed to do. So, just as my dua was fulfilled about the UAE recognising Israel, uh, maybe, inshallah, I hope Saudi Arabia, uh, it does accelerate the process of uh, the Abraham Accords normalized relations um, so well, now before i conclude uh, there was an interesting insight uh, from an ex idf soldier her name is ifrat fenixon and she was in the intelligence division of the idf i think about 10 to 20 years ago and she did serve uh, on the gaza border as well and uh, when the uh, hamas rockets uh, broke through she did uh, record a video about her surprise that the attacks uh, were so quick and uh, they were able to breach the uh, defences. And where was the IDF? Why, with their extensive intelligence networks, uh, they could not uh, predict or see this coming? Um, so something was very, very wrong here, she, she did say. And uh, how complicit was the IDF in allowing Hamas to come through? So I don't know, uh, this is obviously not confirmed, uh, and the fact that she was uh, a member of the IDF in the intelligence division doesn't mean uh, her, she is 100% credible. But her in insight is very uh, interesting. Now, what I will um, connect this, uh, which is uh, unconfirmed, with the um, uh, reports of ha the Haaretz newspaper in Israel, uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was, uh, where they reported that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu did tell the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, that there should be more financial support for Hamas because that would act as a counterbalance to the Palestinian Authority or the Palestinian Authority uh, because the Palestinians, uh, they want uh, a Palestinian state to exist side by side with Israel. And Hamas obviously doesn't want to see Israel. They, they want to obliterate Israel, drive the Jews out to the sea as per their charter. So if um, uh, Netanyahu's government could actually somehow support Hamas, that would be a great counterbalance against the uh, Palestine Authority. And uh, hence, a Palestinian state would not be created. Because apparently, Netanyahu does not want to see a Palestinian state being created. So therefore, the decision was made. Uh, to to support Hamas uh, to act as a counterbalance. Now, uh, because it was reported in the Haaretz newspaper um, um, and there were other reports as well that sort of confirmed this, it does actually um, imply that um, Benjamin Netanyahu, if his government did actually support Hamas, 
then they have blood on their hands as well uh, for the Israeli civilians that have died in the Hamas uh, rockets. And um, I'm sure that there'll be an investigation in terms of why the, uh, why the IDF were nowhere to be seen uh, when the rockets uh, were coming through and the fences were being breached. Were they asked to stand down? I don't know. I mean, this this is unconfirmed. Obviously, I'd be very careful about uh, precision in of information. But uh, if it turns out that the IDF was told to stand down and the Israeli government knew that the Hamas attack was going to take place, then this is high treason, of course. This is really high, high treason. Um, I'm sure there'll be investigation uh, done by the Israeli authorities on how complicit uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was um, in uh, supporting Hamas. But clearly, there was some form of support. I don't know. doesn't say, the report did not say what that uh, looked like. The support was a financial weapons. I, I don't know. So those, uh, so the reason I'm stating this is because those brothers who are supporting Hamas, you know, if it turns out that this was all Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, plan or some of it was a plan, They've just fallen into Netanyahu's trap, haven't they? And as, why aren't I surprised by that? You know, we're so easily manipulated by emotions. We don't know whose trap we're falling into. And, um, you know, when you see protests, you know, Hamas, yeah, Jihad, Allah uh, Akbar. Um, it turns out that uh, a lot of what Hamas did was supported by Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> you know, you really have to, uh, you know, you're just not thinking at all. You're not thinking. The other thing I don't agree with is when Israel is lumped as one monolith, you know. Israel does not represent Benjamin Netanyahu and vice versa. Uh, in a few months leading up to the Hamas attacks, there were protests by Israelis against Benjamin Netanyahu and what he was trying to do. Um, so Muslim brothers who are treating Israel as one evil entity and uh, what Netanyahu has done um, is the representation of Israel. It, it isn't, you know. Um, it's just uh, like uh, when Iraq uh, under Saddam Hussein, all of Iraq was Saddam Hussein, and Saddam Hussein was Iraq. So that's why it was easier to to bomb and kill innocent civilians because they were lumped with uh, Saddam Hussein when they were clearly not. Iraqis did not represent Saddam Hussein, and vice versa. Uh, and I think the mistake is being made here by many Muslims uh, who wants to see Israel destroyed. Not all of Israel is, is the same, okay? So I hope you've found some of these videos uh, useful, insightful. And uh, my final message to those uh, da'is, the scholars, the imams, the ones I have mentioned directly, the others I have not mentioned. Uh, and I mean, people who are listening, ordinary Muslims who are listening, you have the right to question your imams and your scholars and challenge them, okay? They are accountable to us. You know, they're, they're meant to guide us. Ultimately, all of us are accountable to our Creator, to, to, to Allah. But don't be afraid to challenge them, to question them, point out where they've gone wrong. In this case, they've made some serious, serious error of judgment. And regarding this error of judgment, didn't you realize that when Hamas fired those rockets, that there will be blowback ten times as hard? I mean, I wrote about Israel-Palestine issues over the last uh, couple of years. And what has been very consistent with the Israeli response is when Hamas fires rockets, they will, uh, and, and the rockets are not smart, obviously, they're, they're targeting uh, civilians, uh, not military targets, which is completely against Islam. But every time Hamas fires the rockets, Israel hits back 10 times as hard. So when you provoke a lion, when you try to stab a lion and the lion comes back and eats you alive and eats your family, whose fault is it? It's obviously the lion's fault. Yes, it's obviously Israel's fault. But also Hamas, also you who stabbed the lion. So the blood is on their hands. And how is it possible that you were completely brain dead, okay, and not realized that once Hamas fires the rockets, more Palestinians are going to die because Israel fires back 10 times as hard, number one. Number two, Hamas has never, ever uh, developed uh, shelters for Palestinians, for, for the Gazans. Israel has developed uh, bomb shelters uh, to pr protect their civilians, but uh, Gaza hasn't. So what have they done with their uh, millions uh, or hundreds of millions of dollars they've been receiving from, uh, from, from the Ummah? 
Um, Israel has an Iron Dome, which is why uh, civilian casualties can, can be minimized. But if there was no Iron Dome, then those missiles would, would definitely have hit uh, lots of civilians. There would be mass, mass casualties. Where is the Hamas Iron Dome to protect its civilians? It hasn't done anything to protect civilians, except to cause misery. They've also planned way ahead, a few months, some say a year in advance, to buy missiles and, and target Israeli civilians. Uh, but they did not use their funds to, to help develop uh, the people of uh, Gaza. It's an absolute tragedy. So it was obvious that when missiles are fired, Israel will hit back and Palestinians <clears throat> die as a result. And you see the uh, gruesome pictures uh, you know, of, of them dying. Why didn't it occur to you that this was going to be the result. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Uqsim billah, shu'ur izzah wa fakhir tabkeel. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allah yithabit al-mujahideen, ninsurna ya Rabbi Alameen. Allahu Akbar! Issa sa'ari khafatla! Allahu Akbar! Why didn't it occur to you? So Hamas is complicit in this, even if Benjamin Netanyahu was, um, <laughs> you know, may have partly been responsible for supporting Hamas. Hamas was complicit uh, in, the, in the Israeli response because the Hamas knew from experience that Israel will hit back 10 times as hard, that, the, that Hamas does not protect its own civilians. So there will be mass civi civilian casualties from the Palestinian side. All the more reason why you should have condemned Hamas not just for firing missiles uh, f to kill Israeli civilians, but the impact, the blowback it would have had and is having now on the Palestinians. What, why hasn't that occurred to you? you know, what, what, what use is all of that learning that you've done and all of that preaching you're doing? You know, so you should have hit at Hamas really, really hard, but you, but you haven't. So that is a complete shame. So um, when um, we pray, uh, inshallah, I mean, Brother Naik uh, did say, let's pray for the uh, martyrs. Yeah, but absolutely. More importantly, my advice to you, uh, scholars, imams and da'is, is to pray for peace, okay? Pray for peace because ask yourselves, as we're meant to be representatives of, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meant to be representatives of Islam, what would Prophet Abraham want us to do? Right, as Muslims, Jews, Christians, Prophet Abraham alayhi salam, Ishmael, Isaac alayhi salam. What would they want their descendants to do? Live in peace or live in war? Which one? Who should you be supporting? Should you be supporting the Abrahamic principles or not? So, pray for peace. Pray that Jews, Muslims, Christians can unite under Abrahamic brotherhood, and definitely pray for the success of the Abraham Accords. Inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. شو اسمك الرباعي أول شيء؟ جهاد فوز محمد الحمايد. أنت مسؤول إيش؟ مسؤول فصيل. مسؤول فصيل؟ فوين؟ شابورة رفع. اسمك الرباعي يحيى؟ يحيى ماجد صبري سويدا. من وين أنت؟ من السيارات. من السيارات. يعني؟ غزة. غزة. وظيفتك شو كان؟ أخ كنت أنا في حماس. زمرة؟ في القسام قال زمرة. شو اسمك الرباعي؟ one second. One second. لا 
خسارة النخبة شو مهمتكم بالضبط كانت تعمل؟ اقتحام موقع صوب العسكري وغير اللي الموقع فيه كمان كانت مهمة؟ في بوتسو ما رحنا الأصل نروح يعني بعد يومين بيوم أو يومين زي هيك هو مدنيا في ذاك الوقت هو التعميمات في بخصوص المدنيين كانت اللي هو يعني قتل الرجال الاسر اسر اللي هو النساء والمسنين والاطفال قتل الرجال يعني المدنيين الشباب 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 مدنيين؟ ما هو مدني عسكري زي هيك الحين وصلنا على الحدود رحتنا على بئيري بئيري شو تعنوا هناك؟ السيطرة كان قول شو المهمة كانت تبعتكم؟ خطف يعني اها زي كذا خطف واسر من كفر عزا؟ لما احكوا لكم يعني قتل واسر منتو رايحين على مستوطنة فيها مدنيين عارفين هذا الشيء مين قال لكم يعني من القيادة اقتلوا المدنيين؟ احنا اللي كان يحكي لنا محمد نهض البطش مسؤول المجموعة اها شو قال لكم؟ قال لنا احنا مهمتنا كفر عزة بدنا نقتل بدنا نقدر نخطف زي كذا يعني قول لي المهمة تبعتكم شو كانت بالضبط لما طلعتوا؟ السيطرة على موقع الصوفة اها السيطرة شو تعملوا؟ السيطرة شو مركز فين شو تعملوا في اللي موجودين؟ هو تسيطر عليهم تقتل يعني اجت تعليمات واحنا غاد لمسؤول فصيل من قائد السرية قال له اخطف لي لما دخلنا كان الصبح في داخلين نخبة وبعديها كمان نخبة داخلين احنا كان داخلين ناخد اسرة ونقعد في البيوت سلامي بالبيت في وقت التقينا جمعنا عنده كلم ابو زيد ابو زيد قال له طهروا البيوت واخطفوا قد ما تقدروا اسرة لانه في غزة اللي بياخد اسرة له له مكافأة قديش المكافأة قالوا لكم؟ هو شقة منزل بيت و10000 دولار اللي بجيب كل اسير بياخد شقة ومنزل؟ اه مين قال لكم اياها هاي؟ كانوا يحكوها في القسام يعني القسام اه اللي هو في القسام قال لكم كل اسير بتجيبوه بتاخذوا شقه؟ اه لانه هم بدهم اسرى بدهم ياخذوا اقدر ممكن اسرى فهم هدفهم من الدخول اصلا انهم ياخذوا اسرى شو المهمه تبعتك كانت؟ اقتحام اقتحام لوين؟ لاكثر عزه شو تعملوا؟ نطهرها ونسيطر عليها آه. شو يعني التطهير؟ نفضيها من ايش؟ من الناس تخطفوا ولا ايش؟ ما خطفناش احنا يعني ايش بس قتل؟ انفض الضوء وشو عمل القسام يهبري؟ قتل مين قتل؟ مدنيين دخلوا اثنين على البيت ضل في غرفه في الوجه مسكره طخ على الباب صار في صوت جوا دخلوا كمان اثنين كان في واحد مرم على الباب زوامية كان في دم جنبه طبعا كان في جوا زلمة مصاب ومتوقع انها عيلة كاملة عيلة كاملة اه لبس عادي يعني لبس منزلي يعني اوكي اللي زلمة المصاب كان لابس كلسون وطلعت مرة لابس فستان فستان عادي يعني فستان بيت والثاني برضه كمان لابس فستان وفي ولد وبنت فاحنا مشينا يسار وفي بيت هناك طلعوا منه مرة يعني ختيارة غطوها انه هذول الشباب اللي كانوا معك استعملوا العيلة هاي كذراع بشري اه إيه طيب احكي لي في ال... لما خطوا في كفر عزة شو عملتوا بالضبط انتوا اللي كانوا معك؟ دخلنا اول دار بعدين دار كانت المرة طخها حمزة على باب الدار قول لي ال... المرة لما شفتها يعني شو شفت عليها؟ شفتها انا مرمية بس ما قربتش منها يعني طلع الكلب تبعها بالشارع طخيته انا بعدها كان في وحف بالجنينه المدني هذا اللي اللي كتبته كان معه سلاح؟ لا لا كم طلقه ضربت عليه؟ من اثنين لثلاثه فوين الطلقه ضربته؟ على منطقه الصدر منطقه الصدر وبعد هيك؟ بعد كذا قعدنا نلفلف الدور في دارين اظن عملنا فيهم حريقه حرايق احكي لي شو عملتوا في مستوطن البيئي وكيف كنتوا تطهروا البيوت؟ اول ما دخلت صح اول ما دخلت مستوطنه شفت اثنين على فزبه كانوا ماخذين مرأة من عمرها من 60 ل 65 سنة على فزبه ماخذينها لوين؟ لغزة بعد ما قتلوا المستوطن الاثنين سليمان كرم النخبة جابوا جابوا واحد تقريبا عمره 40 ل 45 سنة زلمة كلونه قمحي شوي ومش طويل كثير 
اخذوا عماد ابو دحروج وضلوا طالع فيه طالع فيه ولو وين اخذوه؟ على الغزه واحنا راجعين وراه كانوا طالعين من جوا بنت عمرها يمكن 16 سنه او 15 سنه شو عملتوا في البنت؟ هذه البنت وقفت صوروا معها سيلفي كانوا يقولوا شو في كانوا يقولوا طخوها في قال لا ما تطخوهاش خذوها اسيره وتصوروا معها في واحده تصور معها سيلفي وركبها على الفيسبوك في بيت قدموا عليه قدمنا عليه كنا اجى تبع الهندسه اللي هو تم على جنبه بنظارات ما اعرفش اسمه برضه ما اعرف شكله جاب عبوتين مسطره وعبوه بربشيه وايش فجر الشباك فتح شباك نتفه صغيره جاب حديده صار يفتح الشباك في الحديده اللي هو صار يطلق عليهم من جوا نار يعني رموا عليه قنبلتين انفجر اربع قنابل تنتين انفجر لنا شو تنتين انفجر وقتلوه اه شو عملت؟ طخينا على الشبابيك والابواب اه ومين طخيت هناك؟ طخيت مره كبيره هي كانت بالك ولا ايش في عيني؟ اه اه تفاجأت فيها طخينا وين الطلقه طبقت فيها؟ في في كتفها ايوه شو صار فيها؟ وقعت شو عملتوا كمان في الدور؟ ولعنا ضار كن ضرير ولعنا والدار اللي في جنبكم مين ولعها؟ محمد بصل انت قتلت كم واحد؟ واحدة شو كمان قتلته؟ و محمد بصل قتل واحد مين الواحد هذا؟ كنت 40 42 سنة شو كان بيعمل؟ كان برش مية كان معه سلاح الزلمة؟ لا 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 هو تفاجئ فيه مدني؟ اه كان في في جتة على الأرض باب البيت مطخوخة يمكن طلقتين أو ثلاثة في الراس، راس انفجر يعني وفي طلقات في الصدر من فوق طخيت عليها طلقة في ظهر كم طلقة ضربت عليها هون؟ طلقة واحدة على هذا والطلقة هذاك في رجله اليمين بعد ما طخيت صار زعق علي سلام يقول ليش طخيت هذول الجتات بتضيعش طلقاتك حافظ على طلقة زعل عليك عشانك ضيعت الطلقات إيه. كان بدك شو كان بده تستعمل الطلقات ضد إيه. المدنيين؟ اقتل بده سكروا الباب اللي جوا الغرفة المحصنة بعدين لفوا صار طلع برا عماد ابو عبيدة صار يقولوا في يهود هان في يهود ايش وكان الشباك مسكر حديد صار يقولوا لهم افتحوا اطلعوا افتحوا ما رضيوش كانوا خايفين جابوا عوفة مسطرة حطوها على الشباك وفجروا الشباك فتح نتفة صغيرة صار يولعوا اجى واحد صار يولع قطع قماش بيدخلها يقول انه يدخنقوا من الدخنة البنت خافت وفتحت الشباك بعدين اجى واحد من الجنب حافظ شكله بس ما اعرفش اسمه صار يزعق كتلوا اطفالنا وكتلوا نسائنا وصار طخ عليهم قتلهم؟ اه اطلق عليهم يمكن 10 رصاصات بعدها على الطفلة وعلى امها بنت يمكن عمرها كان 18 سنة وكمان 21 سنة وامها وابوها اربعة وكلب صغير والكلب قتلوا؟ اه كم طلقة؟ مش عارف يعني كل واحد يمكن طخ هذاك طخ يمكن 10 طلقات الاول تانيين كل واحد طخ طلقتين ثلاثة زي الصبية كانت مسلحة كان معهم أسلحة يدافعوا عن حالهم؟ لا ما أطلقوش نار من النار بس هذاك أجا هيك وقف صار يطخ هيك هيك بشكل صار يرش اه بشكل همج وهذا هيك هذا هذا في القرآن هيك بقول الإسلام؟ لا حسب الدين الإسلامي مش أنت إسلامي؟ اه الدين الإسلامي بيقول لك هيك تعال اقتل لا 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 خليني افهم هذه التصرفات انت ما بتشوفها يعني مش زي داعش هيك قتل المدنيين عشوائيا صحيح صحيح؟ الدين منع عن يعني النبي قال لا تقتلوا امراه لا 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 تقتلوا طفلا لا تعقروا امراه لا زي فاهم علي؟ الدين ما بحث على التشويه والتنكيل وال يعني حسب ما العمل اللي صار وانت لما شفت ايش الفرق بين بين هذا العمل لبين عمل داعش؟ ما في فرق بين التنكيل بحث طب حسب الاسلام هيك تفوت وتقتل ناس ويقتلوا اطفال و لا لا مش من الاسلام قتل الاطفال ولا شو اللي شو اللي صار؟ الدين الاسلامي يقبل هيك؟ ابدا قلت لك انا لا تقطع شجرة يعني يحيى في اسمين في العالم عملوا اللي انتم عملتوه داعش وحماس مسموح انك تقتل مره هيك؟ 
ايش القتل هذا كله؟ شو اللي صار؟ مضحوك علينا احنا منهم مغرر فينا ومضحوك علينا منهم من مين مضحوك عليكم؟ انت عين حماس شو؟ اللي قاعدين في الدور وسايبيننا هنا وسابونا جوا يعني هيك بتفكر انت؟ اه هيك بفكر يعني هم اللي في قطر واللي في تركيا وبيحكي باسم الاقصى والمسلمين وقاعد غاد وبعت لنا هنا مين هذول اللي في موجودين في قطر؟ القياده تاعت حماس مين هم؟ اسماعيل هنيه خالد مشعل يعني هيك بفكر يضحكوا عليكم؟ اه هيك ضحكوا علينا هيك هم غاد وهي برضه اهالينا في غزه يعني قاعدين بنقصفوا القيادة سبتنا مين الأشخاص؟ بتقول حماس مين بتقول؟ حماس كلها حماس لكن مين؟ روس حماس مين روس حماس؟ السنوار هنية أبو خالد هم دول روس وأنت بتقول هذول دمروا دمروا غزة في إيش دمروا غزة؟ في كل هاي أنت شايف في ضايل غزة لا ضايل غزة لا دمرت يعني غزة مين اللي دمرها؟ بإيديهم وبإيدينا دمرنا غزة 